seven kingdoms will follow. Welcome to Davy Dave's Take. Today we're talking about Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, a film that has a lot of anticipation around it, but for all the wrong reasons. Aquaman balances his duties as a king and as a member of the Justice League while all planning a wedding? I'm sorry, I kind of have to stop what I was just saying because this is the description of IMDb and, and that's not what happened in the movie at all. They must have cut that whole part out. Fuck it, I'm not gonna finish the description. It's just Aquaman 2. And I believe this is the last film in the DCEU. I think it is before James Gunn takes over. But honestly, I really wasn't looking forward to this film. I know a lot of people are, some are actually really excited for Aquaman 2 because they love the DCU, they love Aquaman. And some people are excited for this film because they've heard all these rumors about the film. There's been a lot of reshoots, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that make the production of this film kind of fascinating. But honestly, I'm very tired. There's some packing I still need to do. I just wanted to stay home and watch the Cavs and then make my top 10 of the year video. But I felt like I should wait. I should at least give Aquaman 2 a chance before I make my top 10 video. And I'm so happy I waited to make my top 10 video because Aquaman 2 is definitely one of my favorite films of the year. I'm just kidding, I fucking hate this film. Maybe I'm being the Grinch, maybe I'm just tired, but this film, really irritated me. I haven't seen a film in a while where it clearly shows that it was having production issues. This film just felt all over the place and this film felt like a giant mess. The first thing I have to talk about, which was the most glaring issue, was the special effects. The special effects artists in this industry are miracle workers. They do incredible stuff and they are extremely overworked. So I don't think it's their fault. But the special effects here look horrendous it is so messy it just doesn't look right at all and like i said i'm not blaming these poor special effects artists because they're overworked they probably had some unrealistic deadline for this movie but honestly the studio is probably like fuck it people probably really won't see this film so you don't have to give it your all we'll just shell out what we've made and see what people think but honestly there are some shots of cgi here that are baffling that this is a big budget film in 2023 the special effects here were terrible and even worse for me i saw this film in 3d yes I feel like I have a concussion. If you've never drank any alcohol in your life, I applaud you, that's amazing. But if you're ever wondering what a hangover feels like, go see Aquaman The Lost Kingdom in 3D. You'll know the feeling. But it's not just the special effects, there's just so much nonsense thrown on the screen, it's just put together so poorly that the whole film honestly just feels like a chore. And part of that's because the story is so bland. It's not very interesting, it's very predictable, you know exactly where it's going. So a lot of these sequences just feel like sequence after another sequence, and there's nothing imaginative to it, and there's nothing really crazy to them either. And it definitely feels like this story was on its first or second draft, because there's so much shit in here, when you really think about it, doesn't make much sense. And this is a film where you're not supposed to question the logic of really anything, because you have people riding on fucking sharks. And when you have your storyline not make much sense, you start questioning everything, and the whole experience just feels like a headache. And this is coming from someone who actually enjoys the first Aquaman movie. The first Aquaman movie felt like a kid was given a giant budget to make a superhero movie, and I felt like most of that film really worked, and I had a lot of fun with that film. It just felt like everything was a huge step backwards. It felt like nothing was creative about this film. There's even some shots and sequences and some music that reminded me of Lord of the Rings. And I mean that in a bad way because it almost feels like they completely copied a character design and one sequence. The villain here feels like villain of the week and that's disappointing because I'm pretty sure Mantra is a big Aquaman villain. I don't know much about the comics or Aquaman, but I'm pretty sure he's supposed to be a big villain. But here it feels like villain of the week because his motivations are so weak. It's the classic cliche that you've seen a million times. I won't say what it is because it would be spoilers. It's just another reason why the film just feels like let's just get this over with. And another big topic that people are going to talk about this film is Amber Heard. And she's not really in the film. You can definitely tell they completely cut out most of her scenes in this film. Because it feels like there are a lot of things missing from this film. And I don't know anything about the reshoots. I don't know anything about the rewrites. But it does feel like Aquaman 
was probably supposed to do with Amber Heard most of the film, but instead he teams up with someone else. So the film feels a little bit different. Like I said, I don't know if that's the case, but that's what it felt like because Amber Heard's in the film for maybe three minutes. She probably has like four lines of dialogue. And look, I'm not even saying she needed to be in the film more or deserved to be in the film more. That's a whole different video. We're not even gonna go there. But my point is, if you're gonna cut her out of the film, then cut her out of the film because there's so much of this film that feels disjointed because she's like barely in it, but she's also in it. It was like the studio was too scared to keep her in the film completely or cut her out completely. So we get this disjointed like halfway point that does not work at all. But I digress because I'm not really sure where the studio was at. I don't know what the story structure looked like when they're making this film. So it's probably harder than it looks. But I gotta say, it just seemed a little weird. And with Jason Momoa, I love Jason Momoa. I think he's a great actor. Even here, I just feel like he was kind of phoning it in. Felt like everyone was kind of phoning it in. Because it seemed like no one really gave a shit about this film. It ended on such a horrible note. So it does feel like they didn't give a shit. And if they don't give a shit about this film, I don't think you should give a shit about this film. I'm gonna give Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom three Davy Daves. I had a feeling before I saw this film that it wasn't going to be great, but I also have a feeling now that I've seen it that this is going to be the new fun thing to shit on. And honestly, I didn't really want to do that, but sometimes I can't help myself if I see a movie that really just bothered me. This film's just been called Aquaman and the Loud Kingdom because, like I said, my head is ringing. So, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Let me know what you guys thought of it once you've seen it. I'm curious to hear. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. Click here to see more of Dave Dave's Takes.